Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to yet another Peninsula webcast. Uh, you're joined by <clears throat> presenting this today is myself, Niall Donnelly. I am a business uh, sales partner here at Peninsula and a business sales mentor as well. So my role within the company would be to contact businesses around the country and HR professionals and um, inform them of legislation changes and better ways to protect their business moving forward and also ma managing some of the team here in the office. Uh, joined as always by uh, Maura Grasic, our COO. How are you doing today, Maura? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, definitely got made it into work today, <clears throat> regardless of being blown away. It was freezing coming into work last week and now it's uh, dealing with wind this week. So it'll be fire and water now for the next couple of weeks, uh, <laughs> get, finishing off all the elements. Um, everyone, we are the webcast today is the Small Business Owner's Guide to support Supporting Diversity in the Workplace. Um, diversity in the Workplace obviously is quite a hot button topic for the past couple of years. Um, it's even quite a grey area as legislation kind of tries to keep up with different case cases um, that do are, that have come up in the past few years. So we're going to be going through each of those and um, we're going to be going through what is diversity and inclusion, how to create an equal workplace, uh, diversity explains, promotion of equality and inclusion. And then at the end, um, we're going to try and get in a few questions if we have time. There'll be a couple of polls throughout as well, as always. Um, and as always, um, we will be following up with everyone who's joined the webcast there today um, and offering a one-to-one -one business review. Uh, this is a complimentary review uh, where we get one of our uh, HR trained consultants out of your business to you know run through documentation, run through recent legislation changes, see what you have in place, and kind of advise the best practice moving forward, um, in order to you know <clears throat> fully keep your documentation watertight and um, keep protecting your business. Um, this is still a grey area in many respects, even though there are legislations, which you know more will chat to you guys about in a couple of moments. Um, but it's really important to make sure that all of your documentation, all of your policies, your procedures are watertight, and you know exactly how to enforce those policies or to communicate those policies across to your to your staff there. Um, but I'll be hopping in at um, points throughout the webcast there this morning, but for the moment, I'm gonna pass you over to Maura, who's gonna bring you through some of the content. Maura. Great, thanks, Manal. Um, so good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, as Niall has said, today we're gonna to talk about diversity and inclusion in the workplace, and I've been in HR for a really long time, and this is definitely one of the biggest growing areas and probably one of the most challenging areas for employers um, over the last number of years. Um, so on today's webinar, I'm just going to talk a little bit about diversity and inclusion, create no equal workplace, diversity explained, because I think sometimes people get a little bit confused in relation to what that is and what that should look like, and looking at promotion of equality and inclusion within your own business. Um, and I suppose the advantages of making sure that you are promoting a diverse uh, workforce, which can be really beneficial for the business. And at the end, we'll have a little bit of time for some Q&A that myself and I will go through. Um, and as always, if you have any questions afterwards, please feel free to contact us. So in relation to diversity and inclusion, one of the first things I want to touch on is really the benefits of it and, and, and the reason why it should be embraced in all workplaces. And, you know, I think it's important to note that the benefits outweigh any sort of negativity that may be there. Um, it gives you improved customer understanding. So obviously, as a society, we have grown from um, different type of backgrounds, different type of customer profiles, different religions, different cultures, all of that sort of thing. And having that diverse workforce working with you and working with your customers can be really beneficial in relation to it. From a recruitment perspective, which we spoke about a couple of weeks ago in relation to the difficulty around it, it gives you a larger pool. So when you have more of a diverse workforce, you can pull from all different avenues in relation to it. So, you know, there's been a big drive, for example, in relation to getting females back into the workplace, et cetera. So looking at expanding on the person in your workforce can be really beneficial from a recruitment perspective. It's proven that productivity can increase when you have and you embrace diversity in the workplace. Uh, which is always beneficial beneficial for the business. And obviously one of the main things we're all aiming to achieve is our bottom line, so our revenue increasing and making sure that we're getting those profits up to where we need to be to continue and make a viable business. Um, also creates a very enhanced workforce um, and optimizes problem solutions because when you have different types of personalities, different types of people, different backgrounds, etc., that can all mean that they can bring something extra to the table that you may not have had there before. So allows any sort of problems that, that you may need solving or creating a much more, um, I suppose, inclusive working environment as well. 
So looking at equal uh, quality in the workplace and what that actually looks like. So I think most people will be familiar with the nine grounds of uh, characteristics in relation to equality in the workplace. And just to be clear, it's not all in relation to diversity based on equality, it's based on a range of different things. But this is one of the areas that I think is really important that people are fully aware of. Um, and it's also one of the areas where if you do get a claim from an employee uh, through the WRC, for example, can obviously put your own business at risk. So I just want to obviously quickly go through them just for a reminder sake for everybody that the nine grounds that are protected by the equality legislation are age, disability, family status, membership of the traveling community, race, religion, civil status, sexual orientation, and gender. And when we were obviously looking up, I put the webcast together, we had a little look to see exactly what's going on out there in the marketplace in relation to claims. So the WRC have committed to releasing a six monthly report in relation to the number of claims, et cetera, that they're actually receiving around the whole area of equality. Um, and it's at the moment they have received so far for the first six months of 2023, the last six months haven't yet been released. Uh, there were 672 claims on grounds of equality, which is quite significant in half a year. And of that, 140 was in relation to gender, which was one of the highest reasons for claims in the WRC. Um, we've also seen an increase in relation to age, and some of that may be related to the fact that people are working a longer period of time. So I think most of you will be familiar with um, some retirement cases in relation to forcing people to retire. Um, that is another area that we're going to look at in a couple of weeks' time. However, at the moment, gender is top of the list in relation to equality claims in the WRC. So how do you avoid this, number one, and how do you make sure that you're being inclusive when in your workplace? So <clears throat> just for clarity, um, I just want to touch on what the types of discrimination were or what that could actually look like. So we have two main types of discrimination in the workplace. We have direct discrimination and we have indirect discrimination. And while direct discrimination can be quite clear cut, um, it's obviously related to one of the nine grounds. So for example, if you have an advertising of a particular role and you say only men apply, only women apply, well obviously that is quite direct in relation to specifying what particular gender that you particularly want. Over the years, we have seen uh, some of these advertisements um, come up uh, and normally it results in the employee employer getting either bad publicity from a PR perspective or uh, in relation to um, employees or potential employees making a claim. And I think that's one of the really important things to remember is that claims can be made against your organization underneath the Equality of Equal Status Act that not necessarily means that it's just from an employee. It can be from other um, members of society, for example, so that's why we need to be really careful in relation to this particular area. Indirect discrimination is ultimately discrimination that may occur when you unintentionally put some sort of advertisement, for example, together. And what I mean by that is if, for example, you have on your advertisement that somebody needs to be six foot two to apply for a job, that means most likely it may exclude a number of females because Obviously, it's more unlikely that a female may be six foot two than it would be for a male. Likewise, when you set um, some sort of specific restrictions in relation to something that may inhabit an employee from making an application for the job because of working hours, etc. So you just need to be careful and conscious of what way you are advertising a role or what sort of policies that you may put in place that will unintentionally have a discrimination impact on either an employee or a potential employee. Um, and that's what we really want to look at as well. So just going to pop back on to Niall there, just before we move on to the policy side of things and looking at diversity in a little bit more detail, just to kind of get an idea on what way we're, what we're looking with people that are on today. Niall? Yeah, so first poll here this morning, um, fairly straightforward to be honest. Has your business ever been faced with a complaint uh, relating to diversity or inclusion in the workplace? Um, as you said there, more this is such a kind of broad area and such a grey area in terms of legislation as well. There are obviously legislations in place, but you know it's almost done by a case by case or study by study basis as you know um, which way it can fall. And I think that a lot of the calls I've been dealing with recently in the past couple of years has been, you know, um, employees seem to be a lot more aware of their employment rights or how it's kind of sided towards the employee in these kind of cases or you know they'll see a claim come through on the news and you know chance their arm a little bit so there does seem to be a lot more awareness um around uh, these kind of issues in the general public these days than there would have been say five years ago 
Yeah, and I also think, you know, to, to be fair, people are very clear on what type of working environment that they actually would like to work in. Um, mm -hmm. So they're quite clear when something arises that they don't believe, uh, you know, is, is in, in inclusion of diversity or is having a problem in relation to equality or something like that. They will put up their hand and they will say it. Uh, which look I think is really positive as well. The, the problem that we see is that when it's not taken seriously or that we think it's, you know, it's only a joke or, you know, some comment is made and it's supposed to be a little bit of banter, etc. It's getting that balance right can be a real challenge for employers. So we've got to look at it in a little few minutes ago by what employers can do around it. Um, but definitely we're in a much more litigious environment than we have been before. Um, and there's an expectation on the employer to ensure that there is a diverse and that equality is fair within the workplace as well. Absolutely. Um, so the results, so 8% of people have been faced with a complaint and 98% haven't. Um, so well, that's great stats for the, the people on the um, webcast here today. Um, thankfully, it, it, it has swung that way that people haven't been had to face um, a, a claim or a complaint, I should say, um, regarding this. Um, but, you know, yeah. that can go either side of um, their the diversity inclusion is in you know um managed so well that uh, com complaints have come up or they've been you know um avoided in that way or you know it's just a certain type of workforce where it hasn't kind of come up there's a lot of different areas that even with um you know newer things that have come out in the past couple of months um it's more more of a gray area with a lot of these kind of things yeah and i think you know now when these things happen in the workplace they can be really detrimental um, for the simple reason that people normally, it's very emotive, as you can imagine, it's very personal to individuals, um, and it can cause quite a diverse, um, sorry, divert, um, or divide, should I say, in the business as well, where people may take sides, and there is kind of different opinions, it's a distraction for the business, like there's loads of other things besides the piece of legislation, and really has an impact, I suppose, on the morale, etc. Like in the business, and it can be really hard to get back from there. So just want to move on now just to have a little look at kind of a few things so first of all let's have a look at what diversity is so really it's any dimension that can be used to distinguish groups of people from one another and it can refer to a range of people in your workforce and one of the very first things that's really important that everybody should do is that you need to make sure that you have a policy in place and um, you know so it needs to be a policy that covers equality diversity inclusion and that is promoted across the workplace so that everybody knows so it should be done at induction, it should be done sporadically throughout the year. Um, so really outlines what your rules and regulations are for employees and for the business to follow. Um, and that creates a, um, a trust, I suppose, that the employer has an expectation on how people are supposed to be treated. And also allows employees to know that they want to have that diverse environment and that they want people to feel they're included and they're welcome in it as well. And sometimes you'll see people doing things like, you know, kind of focus groups, um, you know, different sort of things to embrace different types of culture within organisations like food days, etc. like that, so that everybody has an understanding of each other's background um, and make sure that they feel included in the workplace as well. So some of the areas that you need to include in that policy is that you're very clear that you expect everybody to be treated fairly and that everybody is equal within the business, regardless of background, what characteristics that they come from. Um, and that they're all part of one team and everybody's moving in one direction in relation to conduct and behaviour. So what our expectation is, and that goes back to what I was talking about earlier on in relation to, you know, we're obviously very good at having the banter in, in early Irish culture. Sometimes that banter isn't taken up the same way in other cultures. So it's trying to manage that, manage behaviours, manage the types of jokes, innuendos, comments that are made. Um, be clear that you obviously are following the employment law and any sort of breaches that you know may occur, how you will address it. For example, the majority of businesses now have a zero tolerance in relation to any sort of discrimination that may be in place. Um, and outline your procedures for resolving the problems. Really important that the employee knows what direction they can go and how they can resolve it. Um, we would always advise that we try and resolve these things informally before going down the formal route. But you need to have that outlined in your policy. It's it's better to try and resolve any sort of issues in relation to people feeling that they're being excluded, etc., to an informal method. And it may be that the person at the other end may actually not realise that they're having any sort of direct impact on the particular individual in question. So time for another poll there, Niall. 
Yeah, so um, do you have a policy around equality, diversity and inclusion? Um, and this will be a fairly <clears throat> um, yes, no or no, but I need one. Um, and yet more as you said there, I mean, there are some legal requirements around this, especially having an equality policy, you know, the, the, the nine protected grounds, but having even policies that go further than that, um, you know, God forbid if there ever was to be an incident or a, an issue around anything to do with this in, in your workplace without having the kind of documentation to back it up, you know, nine times out of 10, the way Irish employment law goes, it's going to side with the employee. They have significantly more rights than the employer. So, you know, getting something uh, in place and getting it watertight and up to date is, is really key to kind of protect the business moving forward. Yeah, and I mean, really what you, you will see the majority of business may have some sort of an equality policy in place, so such as the or an equal opportunity business, all of those types of things. I think when it goes to the diversity and the inclusion, we'll probably see an awful lot of employers that actually don't have that. Um, and also, you know, have in place what, you, from your policy perspective, what you do as an employer to make sure that diversity and inclusion is embraced and, it, and it's taken place. So you may see, for example, and this isn't just within the workplace, you'll see in politics, you know, you'll see board tables now trying to advertise for um, a more diverse board or a seat at the, at the table mm -hmm. um, you'll see that from a political perspective that you know the parties are trying to get more females involved in politics so this is something that's going on all around us um which really shows that it's not just within the workplace it's our society has an expectation that we have quite a diverse um workforce that we're with and um, so it's important that that's embraced as well and while we will have an, an equality policy that probably ticks the boxes we need to make sure that we're going above and beyond that and showing our employees really what we're doing to make sure that's supporting them. Exactly. And as you kind of touched on there, it's all good having the policies in place, but, you know, communicating those policies to the employees mm -hmm. and, you know, to doing the best you can to create an environment that, you know, uh, also supports diversity and inclusion. And it's not just I have updated, you know, these documents. There's, there is continuous work to do with it. Yeah. Um, so the results are in there, so we have exactly 50-50 split down the middle. 50% um, of people do have one, and 50% of people said the um, correct answer out of those two was no, but I need one. Um, no one okay. there saying just absolutely no, <laughs> we're, we're going to keep going on as we do. I think everyone can see, the those who don't have the policy in place can see the importance of getting the, this in place now moving forward. Yeah, and, and look, that's obviously something that we can have people with as well. Um, so just going to talk about a little bit of promotion of equality and inclusion in the workplace. Um, so one of the things, obviously, training, really important that training is provided to both employees and to managers. So it's not just one person's responsibility that is across the board. Um, and, and training should be provided. Look, the, the rule of thumb is probably every 18 to 24 months um, that managers and employees are trained in relation to a few different areas. One in relation to the expected behaviours that we spoke about before and expected conduct so that there's no ambiguity what that expectation is. And then in relation to the process, so if you do have a concern or if you do have some issues that you want to raise, what that looks like and how you manage it. You know, the majority of times, the, the challenge that we see is that people get a little bit, and employers get a little bit nervous when they get some sort of a complaint and they kind of put their heads in underneath the sand and hope it's going to go away. What we have seen is it normally just manifests and it comes into a bigger issue than what it really needs to be. Um, so tackling those issues head on is really beneficial for the business and having your managers or your team or whoever's looking after your employees fully aware of how to manage those particular situations can make life really, really easier for the employer and obviously avoid any sort of claims that we don't want to happen. Prevention of unconscious bias. So I think, you know, it's very easy for unconscious bias to happen without people actually even realising it. So, for example, if somebody comes into your business that may be transgender, comes up for an interview, etc. You may form some sort of an opinion before you actually meet and interview the candidate. Um, so that's really important. And there's some transgender legislation in relation to equality as well that people need to be aware of. Um, the other thing is aware, be aware of discrimination. So make sure that you understand what discrimination is, what that looks like, um, so that everybody knows what the nine grounds are, but also everybody knows what they should not do. Review your policy. Uh, really important. So, you know, obviously we've had 50-50 there, but even the people that have a policy, make sure that you're reviewing it regularly. I would say every 12 months have it reviewed. We have a lot of cases, you know, I've spoken before about it not just being legislation, it's about what comes through the different tribunals and the outcomes in relation to cases that really drive what a policy should look like. And I also think we're living in a in an age where society drives an awful lot of expectation um, in relation to how people should be conducting themselves. So make sure that we're fully aware of that. 
Um, I spoke about acting swiftly there a few moments ago. So if there is an issue that we act swiftly, that we don't hide it, that we don't um, hope it's going to go away on its own because that won't happen, unfortunately, it normally just manifests. Um, and make sure that you know how to um, address the different issues. Um, the informal piece, mediation, always something that you should look at or, or you know, trying to do. But also I think one of the really important things is that you celebrate diversity in the workplace, that you recognise it. Um, and I think sometimes that, that's the little piece or a little trick that's missed, that we communicate out, that we expect um, people to be inclusive in the workplace. We celebrate the success that we have because of it. Um, and that, for example, if we, if we have promotions in the workplace, if we have won a particular deal, really important that we call our people, et cetera, as well, um, and that we identify what that looks like. So <clears throat> I spoke there quite quickly. If we just have the same detail there in relation to it. So Niall, I, I, I think I'm just going to hand back to you there. Um, I think you may have some questions, et cetera, that are coming in there. I do, yeah. There's some... Um questions people have sent in there so thank you very much for those and yeah it's interesting now Maura just you know the few of these webinars that we've been doing how certain things seem to pop up again in different areas just what you mentioned there about um, celebrating uh, the diversity in the workplace is something that people kind of overlook it's same as similar to the communication that we talked about last week um, and as you said you know something as simple as you know taking that extra step as an employer to make the employees feel seen and heard can make a huge difference into the workplace and I, don't, I think a lot of people kind of might skim past that or unfortunately might skim past that. Yeah I totally agree with you Nan. and I think especially because now we're working in an environment that we're going to talk about next time tomorrow's webinar and the whole flexible work and remote work and all that sort of stuff it's important that we celebrate um, our wins our successes that we're communicating effectively and I think one of the other things is that it's very hard to um, kind of get those team working get that you know I speak a lot about um, bringing teams together um, and making sure they're working correctly. We've seen kind of different challenges now that people are working from home a little bit more. Um, so trying to find ways to, in, you know, encompass that diversity within the workplace can be a little bit more challenging when people are remote. Uh, but there's definitely different ways that that can be done in order to um, celebrate the successes of the business as well. Absolutely. And you can join us for our webinar on that tomorrow to find out more. Um, just going to fly through some questions here, everyone. So um, who should be responsible for promoting diversity and inclusion in my business? OK, good question. Um, ultimately, it's everybody. Um, so the responsibility obviously sits with the employer to make sure we have got a safe environment, a very safe working place, etc. So all those things like making sure your managers, employees are trained, policy to place, all that sort of thing is all basically the employer's responsibility. Um, however, the promotional of it and the engagement of it is everybody's everybody's responsibility. So when we have, you know, everybody, as I said before, going towards one goal, it means that it's much more of a successful, equal and diverse working environment as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, would there be anything around, you know, getting a, a, a diversity officer in or a culture officer or someone who kind of handles social events for larger companies or would it all kind of come back to, you know, everyone's involved or even coming back further to, you know, the employer then as, as, as their main responsibility? Yeah, I mean, look, at ultimately all of these uh, pieces of employment legislation sit underneath the employer's responsibility, but it's how you manage them roll them out is what's really important. So yeah. having your policies in place, having your training in place, basically is your starting point. In relation to bringing in a diversity person, et cetera, we see that there is you know, training in place that you know you can bring in an external party for. Um, you can organize different events that celebrate different types of cultures, et cetera. So there is numerous different ways in order to do that. But ultimately, the starting point is from an employer's perspective to make sure that they have the foundation in place and then that it grows from there by embracing different employees to be involved in any sort of processes and rollout that you actually do. Yeah, exactly. As we always say here, or it seems to say quite often, it's better to be um, proactive instead of reactive. And laying that foundation is key to kind of having all these things um, sort of moving forward. Um, should I be conducting training with my staff? Um, I don't know where to begin. Kind of yeah, touched on so that, the importance of that. Yeah, and you know, I think sometimes this is where employers fall down uh, in relation to it, that they don't do that training. So they may have a lovely policy in place, they may know what to do, but it hasn't been communicated out. So that employee element of training and letting them understand what it is, is really important because that really, I suppose, solidifies that the employees are aware, the employer is aware and everybody is fully 
understandable of what the exact behaviours and conduct is within the workplace as well. Yeah, and they need to go hand in hand. Is that correct? Yeah. The, you know, documentation and the, the training, it's not really, yeah. can't really have one and the other. They support them each other. Absolutely. Mm. You know, it isn't together. If anybody needs training at Tesla, that they can obviously speak to yourself, Niall, or one of our colleagues as well, because that's obviously something that we provide here as well for people. Absolutely. And then I'd say we'll have time for one more. Um, ooh, can I ask my staff members to speak English whilst in work? Um, I don't want to be rude but other employees have told me that they feel excluded. It's yeah, you would be, this, yeah, and that actually comes up quite a lot on our advice line, to be honest with mm. you. The simple answer is that you can ask your employers, even, to speak English while they're uh, in work and on the premises, etc. cetera. Um, and ultimately, as the owner, manager, etc., you decide what type of environment you want. Um, however, the gray area and the challenge piece is when people, for example, are on the lunch break, etc., and they may start communicating in the canteen or, you know, a break area, and they're communicating in their own languages. You know, technically speaking, they're probably not paid, so they're not um, there um, at that point in time. However, underneath, they're on your premises, they're in your business, etc. Um, so that can be a little bit of a challenge, and it comes back really to explaining why uh, the decision has been made for English to be used while on the premises or while in the work environment. Um, and to be fair, I think if we're applying it to everybody, regardless of nationality, your culture, your language, etc., um, then there that is creating a fair and inclusive environment because you're including in everybody. Um, so, for example, that would include somebody maybe speaking the Irish language, somebody speaking French or Lithuanian or whatever the case may be. We need to apply it to everybody and that we're not making exceptions and that we explain to employees the reason and the rationale to do it. And that is basically that we're creating an inclusive work environment. And sometimes when people are in an environment that they don't understand the language being spoken about around them, they feel uncomfortable um, and, and don't enjoy being in that working place and that's an environment that we don't want to create. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I think we're just coming up to time here now. Everyone, thanks very much for joining us again. Um, we have two more webinars coming up, one tomorrow at the same slot, um, so 11 a.m. tomorrow, and that, as Moira mentioned there, is about managing um, remote working, working from home policies. Uh, as you said, there's an interesting one, it's a fairly new concept, and um, there's a lot of different things that go into it, it even leads into health and safety to some degree as well, so there'll be a lot to cover in that. And then next Wednesday, the 31st of January, uh, at this time, at the same time slot in a week's time, um, is the uh, Small Business Essentials Guide to Workplace producti Productivity. Ways to streamline your business and ensure productivity and um, your business is um, working efficiently to the best of its ability, which I, at the end of the day, as Murray you mentioned earlier, is kind of why we're all here, <laughs> uh, trying to get the business working as best as it can. Super. Um, yeah. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Moira, okay. as always. Super. Thank you. No problem. Looking forward yeah. to seeing you tomorrow. Absolutely. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Great. All right.